Okay, um, my name's Imi Morf, and I'm from the UK originally, but I've been in Norway for about 12 years. And I'm going to talk about how my books, or how I use the artist books in my practice, starting from 2000, where I, um, I originally trained as a landscape architect and was working as a landscape architect, and then... I cycled around Iceland from the UK, so we island hopped from uh, Orkney, Shetland, Faroe Islands, and then round Ireland, back through Norway and Sweden, no, Norway and Denmark. And during that time, I always thought I'd carry on being an art, a landscape architect, but I met somebody in Reykjavik in Iceland who said to me, everything is only a decision away. So I decided that I would go to art school. So I swapped careers after this cycle ride and um, started working with artist books. And this is one of the first one which has 121 pages because our cycle ride was 120 days long. And I wrote a really boring diary every day. So I just distilled it down to taking one or two words out of the diary for each day and Malbik Endar means tarmac ends or yeah asphalt ends in Icelandic. Um, when I moved to Norway I ended up living right next door to the container harbour and also have a studio inside the container harbour. So I'm really influenced by these containers that I walk past every day you don't know what's going to come out out of them the landscape changes, the colors change, and I've become very obsessed by boxes. So this exhibition called Translating Travels is a, a collection of 20 years worth of work that has something to do with journeys. And they're mainly artist books and also prints and everything packs into boxes, which pack into boxes and end up on a crate, which is only 80 centimeters by 60 by 80 centimeters high. So it all goes on a half euro size pallet. And this is the exhibition exhibited in Christiansand Kunsthall Hall in um, February this year. And the crate also contains all the exhibition furniture. So the legs of the stands come out of the crate as well. And these are some of the images. A lot of the work are also boxed or live in boxes. And then this one here, you can see Melbic Endar, the first book that I made next to an, ex uh, an expanded version. So these tiles here are of the drawings of each day of the journey or the road in front of me. And this is trans Translating Travel Suitcase, which includes 16 artist books all about journeys, so they're by bike, swimming, bus, boat, walking. Another project which is included in Translating Travels comes from a residency that I did in Finland. I often work, I, yeah, projects often come out of being on residency in different places and different experiences. So this was in a forest in Finland in an old school as part of Artelis uh, Creative Arts Centre. And I spent a month cycling around the area and just working with um, making notes of things that were happening. And it was a project that we, there was also artists and um, writers together. So we were influencing each other's practice. And then I found this index card box, or not the box, but the index cards in a local thrift shop on the side of the road. So invented an alphabet. And both this project and Melbic Endar were both letterpress printed. So using the old fashioned blee sats or um, lead type is a way that I really like to print as it really makes me have to think how I use text. And my text often becomes quite minimal in my work. This is another residency in um, the north of England that I did in 2007 and was invited to spend a year at 
this manor house. I lived in the back and this is my studio on the left hand side and it's called Visual Arts and Rural Communities and it's been running since 2000. Each year they invite a new artist to come and live and work and you have to do two things. One is um, involve the local community and also have an exhibition at the end of the year. And so I spent a lot of time looking at how the nature changed throughout the year, the seasonal variations, and also invented exhibit or invented events that could happen within the local community. So this was Norway Day, which we held in the village hall. I'd spent a couple of years in Norway before I moved back to the UK again because the village hall was the sort of center of this community. So there was always crazy things happening in it. Like there would be a pie challenge. So everybody would have to make a pie and then there would be a competition, um, which had a serious side to it because it was a sheep lamb produ producing area. So they were wanting to try and make the best lamb pie to show off and yeah, how it would invent. But then it, so I would design the graphics for the, the pie challenge. And then I thought, okay, I'll do something in the village hall. And I invited, I first thought we would eat a bit of brown cheese and probably see a, a Norwegian film, but we ended up becoming much bigger event. And we ended up cooking forikol, um, which is sheep and uh, cabbage, very traditional Norwegian dish for 80 people and got some, um, fiddle player musicians to come over from Norway and then invited people in the local area if they had anything Norwegian in their homes. So we made um, exhibitions and workshops during the day. And then for each of the things that sort of happened during that year, I would make an artist book from, and this is Art uh, Norway Day Cabinet of Curiosities. And at the end of the year, I had eight editioned books and also other artifacts and projects. And this is one boxed work, which is a library bookshelf. And it traveled in the library bus, which went through the valley so that people could take the work out and have it in home, at home in their living room, just like they would take a novel from the, the book bus, bus. Yeah, book bus. And another version of this was raffle tickets and well, a bigger version that opened up like a suitcase and was designed to go on the back of a bicycle, which I cycled through the valley and stopped at schools and other art venues to um, talk about my year of living in Northumberland. LK243 is a um, under sale, was a artist in residency project which was amazing, but at the same time, slightly crazy. I spent five weeks on this small, tall ship thinking when I applied for it that, oh, I'd be on a sailing boat and it would be very peaceful and quiet. I had no idea what the tall ships races was about. And if anybody's experienced it in the harbour, there were sort of sometimes 5,000, 500,000 people come to visit every time you come into harbour. And each of the boats also had to have... Um, 50% of the crew has to be 15 to 25 years old. And they put all the 15 year olds on this boat. So I had eight 15 year olds, four crew who changed every week and myself and the captain. Um, and my, my only private space on board this boat was two meters wide, long, um, 80 centimetres high and 60 centimetres wide, and that was divided from eight other people in a room by a curtain. Needless to say, I didn't sleep particularly because we raced from Ireland to Scotland, and then we raced again from Scotland to Shetland, Shetland to Stavanger, and Stavanger to Halmstad. Um, but I managed to do two projects whilst we were at sea and in the harbours, and one was collect um, boat drawings from the general public. So I collected 500 boat drawings and also threw wooden postcards into the sea, which I'd stamped the date and place where we where I posted them off the ship. And these were the 500 boat drawings, and this is documenting the postcards. And then at the end of it, I had 
five weeks on Shetland Islands trying to get my head together and work out what I was actually going to do with the information that I of the experience that I'd had. And this box I made before we left because I'm only 165 high, so I had a little space at the end of my bunk. So this box traveled with me during the journey, and I always thought that I would do pop-up exhibitions or something. I, was, I had no time to do things like that. But the, the tray here was used for me to collect the boat drawings. And then I produced um, artist books, prints, and other artifacts that fitted into the box. And these are some of the postcards that were found and sent back to me that had been posted out to sea. One of them had traveled 800 kilometers. I chucked it in the sea in Stavanger and it was found near border in uh, North Norway. So. And from that project, um, I was invited to curate an exhibition at Kunstler House Dortmund with Rona Ranch. And we titled it Voyage, Sea Journeys, Island Hopping and Transoceanic Concept. Sent out a, um, an invitation, well not an invitation, a call for um, interest and had 200 people who had proposals or already work existing that they wanted to exhibit. And we chose 11 artists. And then I also wanted to include a book art section. So I included a book art section within the exhibition. And these are just a couple of images of them. the work. This one is by Gunnar Jonsson um, from Iceland. And this one is John Cumming from Shetland. And Matthew Herring from the UK with his oil paintings. So there were large scale works. And then this is the book art section where we had a specially made sea trunk that housed the books. And at the end of this, everybody wanted it to travel, but I didn't have the capacity to do that at the time. So I invited 18 of the artists to work in the format of 15 by 15 centimeters. And we produced this in an edition of 40 copies. So it was a sort of a, a condensed uh, exhibition in itself. And then this has been traveling to various places around the world. And I've just put these in here really about how you can display artist books in different situations. And I'm just going to end on a quick um, information about Codex Polaris, which is a artist run collective where we focus on creating platform for artist books in the Nordic countries by um, curating exhibitions, going to book fairs, and also um, organizing collaborative projects. And I, sorry, I founded it with Rita Mahog and um, Rani Andi Strand in 2013, really because I'd worked a lot with artist books in the UK and then came over to Norway and it was like, where do I find people making artist books? And it was at a time when there were no art book fairs in Norway before um, Bergen Art Book Fair started in 2013. Yep. So it was all happening at that time. And this is the first exhibition that we put together where we invited 10 artists, um, mainly from the Bergen area, who either worked with books or had probably made one or two books, but we wanted to like just bring people together. We had a workshop with talks and it then traveled to three locations in Norway, at Stormen in Border and um, Sognefjord and Kunstmuseum in Förde and in USF in Bergen. And it was about giving books a larger space than being exhibited at a book art fair and for the book works to become bigger than just a book that we think of in the small scale. And this one's by Rani Andy Strand and is the metaphor book. It's about this big and weighs absolutely nothing and there's nothing in it, no information in it. Um, 
and Dino Dittrich's the original copy. So this was a copy machine where you actually had to print the book and it's all a question about what is original and what's the copy with instructions of how to make the book. And this was my uh, work for this project, which was made out of crisp reds with the words eat and read me. So as the exhibition traveled around, people were eating and reading the work. And in 2019, we were invited to create the um, international focus at Codex, which is one of the world's biggest book art, well, artist book fairs. So for work, um, books very much printed, hand printed and handmade by the artists. And is in California in the USA. And we invited curate or uh, invited partners from Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Denmark, and Finland. thank you, Finland, um, to curate their own stands. And then we had a sixth stand, which um, we organized a collaborative project called Bibliotech Nordica. Bibliotech Nordica includes 82 artist books by people from the Nordic countries made in an edition of 11, and they're all A6 size. But there was no um, limitations on what material, how they were bound, or the subject matter. So this is Bibliotech Nordica, and they, we have a copy, 10 of these library copies. And then the 11th book was sent back to one of the artists that participated. So that was their part of, yeah, thank you for being included in it. And then these are a few of the covers. And this is what happens when you, this box is this size, so it's not very big when it's packed down, but what happens when you expand the books into an exhibition space? This is at the same exhibition that my work was in, Room for Burka, in Christian Sankunsthal in February this year. Um, and the very last project I'm going to talk about is Codex, uh, the Nordic, Nordic Letterpress Collaboration, Posted Unposted project, which is a, yeah, I've put this in because it's relevant to um, Sunday's workshop and um, working with this old fashioned way of printing type and also image, but type in this case, and trying to find people working with letterpress in the Nordic countries. Where do you find people working with this? And this was back in 2016, and I was working with um, Lena Nordenström in Sweden, and she has this amazing workshop in a fantastic building in the middle of the forest in Sweden, um, which she's been running since 2009 and hosting a lot of residency artists and also um, doing a seminar every year. And we invited 25 artists from the Nordic countries who work with letterpress and we found different small printing publishers and but mainly people working within the artist book world. And again this was printed in an edition of 40 and this is the result. And I've got both this version and I've just finished doing a Nordic, a posted, unposted British Isles where we've invited 25 artists from the British Isles to take part as well. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.